Tomorrow, the first Friday in May, is Fallen Heroes Day in Maryland. Each year, it's marked by a ceremony honoring those who work in public safety who died in the line of duty. So this year, we remember an unprecedented 15 fallen heroes, seven of whom died of COVID. In Baltimore City, in just the past few months, we lost police officer Kiona Holly, shot in her patrol car just before Christmas. And on January 24th, as we just mentioned, the loss of three firefighters, Lieutenant Paul Butram and Kelsey Sadler, and EMT firefighter Kenny Lacayo in that fire on South Stricker Street. So it was after the deaths of three Baltimore County firefighters in 1984 that Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens created an annual event to honor the sacrifice of every man and woman who died that year in public safety service. I sat with the brother of one of those firefighters and the sister of Lieutenant Kelsey Sadler as they prepare for tomorrow's Fallen Heroes Day. Today is 13 weeks. Um... Kelsey loved life, and she lived it like she meant it, all gas and no brakes. Sometimes I'll get a phone call or a text message right at, the, right at the right time, and I feel like we're all going through this together, so we're all leaning on each other. Lacey Marino is a firefighter just like her sister. When Lieutenant Kelsey Sadler died January 24th, Lacey realized it's more than a profession. It's a family. Even being at the services, there were... There were people who flew in from France and all over the United States, you know, to honor, you know, Kenny, Paul, and Kelsey. It's just, it's, it's very overwhelming and beautiful at the same time. We went back to the room, and I will tell you, for as long as I live, if I live to be 100 years old, I will never forget walking in that room and seeing the blinking red light on the phone. Chief Thomas Kimball was 23 on his honeymoon in the Bahamas when he got the call to get home. Something had happened to his brother, Baltimore County firefighter James Kimball. It is all my brother ever wanted to do. It is not what I wanted to do. It is not. James Kimball and two other county firefighters were killed in a five alarm fire at Schiller's Furniture Store in Dundalk in 1984. Tom's life changed that day and then again the day he attended the ceremony at Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens. My calling came right here. It happened that day. At the ceremony? Mm -hmm. It changed me 100% forever. And I saw thousands of people, thousands of people, people from fire departments so far away, I had never even heard of them. And they were coming to see my brother, Walter, Henry, and I knew standing at the gravesite. I remember we were all leaving and I, I just didn't want to leave. I just wanted to stay there just a few more seconds realizing, damn, this is what I got to do. I've got to, I've got to pick up. Uh, where he left off, and I have to do this for him. Chief Kimball is now retired. For the past 38 years, they truly died in the line of duty. He and his family have been coming to Delaney Valley on Fallen Heroes Day to honor his brother. You know, at that point when you're sitting in that front row, this is never going to get better. It's just not. That's the way you feel. Right. It's just never going to get better. Well, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't get a whole lot better. It doesn't get a whole lot easier, but it does, in fact, change. I have my moments. You know, I think about her a lot at night and in the morning. Um, holidays, you know, just, you know, things that are coming up. I just, you push through it. So, especially for the kids. Oh, my. Lacey and her husband, both firefighters, have two young children who are devastated by the loss of their aunt, as is Kelsey's nine-year-old stepdaughter. Because she's on the job, the morning of January 24th, no one needed to tell Lacey what was happening. When I received the phone call, I, um, it, I knew. I knew what the, what the outcome was going to be. Without, I just, I felt it, so... And there wasn't anywhere else that I was going to be besides standing on scene and watching the best of the best do everything they could, you know, to rescue them. And you were there when they brought her body out? Mm hmm. That must have been hard. Yeah. I can't. 
I can't imagine. As hard as it is, I just, there was nowhere else I would have been. Mm -hmm. I had to be as close to her as I could. Mm -hmm. Paul, Kelsey, and Kenny, they did their job that morning, okay? They did their jobs. Absolutely. And in a service we used to refer to it as pushing, you, they pushed through the door. That's, that's what they did. And there are those who will push through the door. But you need people to push through the door. Lacey, of course, has been declared a homicide, that fire mm -hmm. in Stricker Street, but that's something she really didn't want to talk about because sure. the loss is the loss, mm -hmm. no matter who ends up being to blame. One thing I want to point out, a story like this doesn't resonate unless you have the type of photojournalists involved who shot this story, as well as the people who edited it, pulled it all together. So, you know, what a credit, not just to the firefighters, the people who are featured in there, but the people who helped put the story together, and we appreciate everything that they've done. Yeah. Absolutely.